Hi, it's Mrs. Brooks here. Today's story is Last Stop on Market Street by Matt De La Pena. It is a fabulous story. It's one of my favorites. I actually was really lucky and I got to meet uh, the author a couple of years ago. It's really great. It won a Caldecott medal and it also won a Newberry medal, which is fabulous. Caldecott is for the pictures and the Newberry is for the story. So I hope that you really, really enjoy this. Last stop on Market Street. Let's get to it, okay? So here we go. CJ pushed through the church doors, skipped down the steps, and there he is, running, skipping down the steps. The outside air smelled like freedom, but it also smelled like rain, which freckled CJ's shirt and dripped down his nose. Can you picture that? Freckled his shirt, plop, 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 and dripped it down his nose. I bet that's happened to you sometime. Let's turn the page. He ducked under his Nana's umbrella saying, how come we gotta wait for the bus in all this wet? Trees get thirsty too, his Nana told him. Don't you see that big one drinking through a straw? CJ looked for a long time, but he never saw a straw. <laughs> He's looking. What do you think Nana meant by that? Can you picture it? The big old tree. Look at that tree. What part of that tree looks like a straw? Hmm. Do you think the trunk of the tree might look like a straw? Let's turn the page. From the bus stop, he watched water pool on flower petals, watched rain patter against the windshield of a nearby car. His friend, Colby, climbed in, gave CJ a wave, and drove off with his dad. Nana, how come we don't have a car? Hmm. There he is waving, right there. I wonder what Nana's gonna say. Boy, what do we need a car for? We got a bus that breathes fire. And old Mr. Dennis who always has a trick for you. <gasps> the bus breathes fire? What do you think Nana means by that? Let's find out. There they are getting on the bus. Just putting her umbrella away. The bus creaked to a stop in front of them. It sighed and it sagged and the door swung open. What's that I see? Mr. Dennis asked. He pulled a coring from behind CJ's ear, placed it in his palm. Ho, <laughs> ho, ho, Nana laughed her deep laugh and pushed CJ along. They sat right up front. The man across the way was tuning a guitar. An old woman with curlers had butterflies in a jar. Nana gave everyone a great big smile and a good afternoon. CJ made sure, she made sure CJ did the same. Look, there they all are sitting. There's the man with the guitar, other people sitting there. There's CJ and Nana. And there's the lady with the butterflies in the jar. The bus lurched forward and stopped. Lurched forward and stopped. Nana hummed as she knit, How come we always got to go here after church? CJ asked. Miguel and Colby never have to go nowhere. Well, I feel sorry for those boys, she told him. They'll never get a chance to meet Bobo or the sunglass man. And I hear Trixie got herself a brand new hat. CJ stared out the window, feeling sorry for himself. He watched cars zip by on either side. He watched a group of boys hop curbs on bikes. Hmm. He felt sorry for himself. Did you ever feel that way? Wonder why you had to do something when your friends didn't have to? Wonder if he's going to keep feeling that way. Let's keep reading and find out what happens. A man climbed aboard with a spotted dog. CJ gave up his seat. How come that man can't see? Boy, what do you know about seeing? Nana told him. Some people watch the world with their ears. That's a fact. Their noses too, the man said, sniffing at the air. That's a mighty fine perfume you're wearing today, ma'am. 
Nana squeezed the man's hand and laughed her deep laugh. There's the man with the sunglasses and there's his dog. Why do you think he's wearing those sunglasses? And that's a special dog. Two older boys got on next. CJ watched as they moved on by and stood in the back. Sure wish I had one of those, he said. Nana set down her knitting. What for? You got the real live thing sitting across from you. Why do you ask the man if he'll play us a song? CJ didn't have to. The guitar player was already plucking strings and beginning to sing. To feel the magic of the music, the blind man whispered, I like to close my eyes. Nana closed hers too. So did CJ and the spotted dog. Look at that. <laughs> and in the darkness, the rhythm lifted CJ out of the bus out of the busy city, he saw sunset colors swirling over crashing waves. He saw a family of hawks slicing through the sky. Saw the old woman's butterflies dancing free in the light of the moon. CJ's chest grew full and he was lost in the sound. And in the sound gave him the feeling of magic. Do you think he's using his imagination? I think he is. It's got to be a good feeling, right? Let's find out what happens. The song ended and CJ opened his eyes. Everyone on the bus clapped, even the boys in the back. Nana glanced at the coin in CJ's palm and CJ dropped it in the man's hat. Last stop on Market Street, Mr. Dennis called. You can see Nana and CJ are getting off. CJ looked around as he stepped off the bus, crumbling sidewalks and broken down doors, graffiti tagged windows and boarded up stores. <sighs> he reached for Nana's hand. How come it's always so dirty over here? She smiled and pointed to the sky. Sometimes when you're surrounded by dirt, CJ, you're a better witness for what's beautiful. Hmm. Wonder what she means by that. CJ saw the perfect rainbow arching over the soup kitchen. He wondered how his Nana always found beautiful where he never even thought to look. He looked all around them again at the bus surrounding the corner out of sight and the broken street lamp still lit up the bright and the stray cat shadows moving across the wall. Right there's the rainbow, look at that. When he spotted their familiar faces in the window, he said, I'm glad we came. There's all the people lining up for the soup kitchen. He thought his Nana might laugh, her deep laugh, but she didn't. She patted him on the head and told him, me too, CJ, now come on. You can see all these people are sitting down to eat. And here's CJ and here's Nana and they're helping serve the food in the soup kitchen. And there they are at the bus stop again, waiting to go home. That's the end of the story. And if you don't know what a soup kitchen is, a soup kitchen is a place where people who don't have enough food to eat can go and uh, get a meal and so that they're not hungry for the day. And so Nana and CJ go to the soup kitchen every day after church and uh, help serve people who are hungry. And uh, CJ, I think, learned a lesson that, you you know, they go there and he thought maybe everything was dirty and why do I have to do this? And then he said, wow, Nana sees beautiful things even when first glance there isn't always something pretty to see. That's a pretty awesome thing to think about. So I want you to think about this. I, when I talked to this author, he said, be a witness. Be a witness of pretty things, beautiful things all around you. So if you see a dirty thing or a broken thing, try to find something else around you that is beautiful. I bet you can do it. I know you can. So anyway, I hope you love this story. 
Last Stop on Market Street by Matt Day Le Pena. Tune in for another one. Thank you.